In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We read in the book of Numbers. On the way, the people lost patience. They spoke against God and against Moses. Why did you bring us out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? For there is neither bread nor water here. We are sick of this unsatisfying food. The people complaining in the wilderness were complaining of the miraculous manna. They weren't complaining uh, about some normal human food that they were eating. They were complaining about the miraculous provision by Almighty God of this heavenly food that descended every day. We're told that on the ground in the early hours of the morning, uh, a dew formed and then this dust formed that could be eaten, could be made into different foods. This happened every day or every day except the Sabbath day for 40 years. And yet the Jews complained of this miraculous daily provision. We are sick of this unsatisfying food. And my friends, it seems that those words have echoed down through the ages within the Catholic Church, the fulfillment of the Jewish religion. So many people, whether they perhaps realize it or not, are saying these very words of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. We are sick of this unsatisfying food. Maybe that sounds shocking. But that's the reality. For many people, quite clearly, our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament is considered an unsatisfying food. No wonder no one genuflects when they come into the church before the Blessed Sacrament. No wonder practically no one goes to confession and yet without hesitation comes forward to receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, in Holy Communion. And no wonder so many lapsed Catholics have so many tips for priests about how they can get more people at Mass, making things more interesting, more entertaining, more accessible. We are sick of this unsatisfying food. Maybe not, maybe not everyone is saying this outright, but there's a sense, a misguided sense, that we need to do something to make our faith more exciting. As if Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament was not sufficiently amazing, as if the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass somehow needed to be made into a greater entertainment, as if the experience of receiving Jesus in Holy Communion was so lacking that we needed to have the children doing a dance, holding hands around the altar, maybe have a, a band here. We are sick of this unsatisfying food. We want something else. Indeed, you could say, um, you could say that the history of Protestantism is that echo. We are sick of this unsatisfying food. We want something else. In fact, the Jews on another occasion in the desert, they say, it says, and this is from the book of Exodus, the rabble among them had a strong craving for other food. And again, the Israelites wept and said, who will feed us meat? We remember the fish we ate freely in Egypt, along with the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions and garlic. But now our appetite is gone. There is nothing to see but this manna. What ingratitude. But even more than ingratitude, it was a, it was a lack of, it was a forgetfulness of what was contained in the manna, the capacity, the power of the manna. Because we read, we read in, the, in the book of um, Wisdom, chapter 16, we find out a little bit more about the secret power of the manna in the desert. The author of the book of Wisdom tells us, or he tells the Jews rather, 
You nourished your people with the food of angels, or he's speaking to God. You nourished your people with the food of angels, and with no labor on their part, you supplied them bread from heaven that was ready to eat, filled with every delight and pleasing to every taste. The sustenance you offered manifested your kindly mercy to your children, for the bread that conformed to desire of those who ate it was transformed to appeal to each one's preference. So the miraculous thing about the manna was not just the amount that came, but it was the fact that if you approach the manna with the right dispositions, it seems like it tasted like whatever you wanted it to taste like. What an amazing food. So if you wanted, if you imagined maybe steak, it tasted like steak, or, or if you imagined chocolate, it tasted like chocolate. So what a great food to have during Lent. But the, the thing is, in spite of the manna, being able, to, being able to satisfy every desire, every type of taste, people complained about it. It's because they had somehow forgotten this capacity of the manna, what the manna was able to do for them. And perhaps it emerged, perhaps it happened slowly. Perhaps it emerged slowly. Perhaps to begin with, they, they had a real consciousness about the gift of the manna and the power that the manna had. But then over time, they just couldn't be bothered. Uh, and, and the manna just became a piece of bread or it became like flour to them, like, like, um, like straw. It was no longer delightful to them. And I think that's what happens, or, or the danger of that, or the danger of something that can happen to Catholics in relation to our Lord in Holy Communion. That even if you are, um, a, even if you are amazed, you, even if you are amazed continually at the miracle that, that God, uh, that our Lord Jesus transforms a piece of bread into his own self and feeds us with his own flesh and blood, even if you're amazed by that miracle, there can be a slow tendency to find the miraculous fulfillment of the manna unsatisfying. Maybe you wouldn't dare say that, but sometimes our actions show this creeping in. Do you make serious preparation before Holy Mass? Do you form in your heart an intention for your Holy Communion? Because we could say that the intention that you have, the Holy Communion is the fulfillment of the manna. We know this in, in the benediction. We say, don't the priest says, Panum de Celi, Panum de Celi, Praesis de Omnes Delectamentum in Sehabentum, which is exactly those words I, I quoted from the Book of Wisdom. You have given your people bread from heaven, the bread which is full of all goodness, or having in itself all sweetness. So the Blessed Sacrament is the fulfillment of the manna in this way. The manna, it tasted like whatever you wanted it to taste like, but the Blessed Sacrament has every answer to prayer. The Blessed Sacrament contains the source of every virtue, every grace, every transformation you need in your own soul and in your life is contained in the Blessed Sacrament. The bread that is full of all goodness. But to access this goodness, we have to desire this. We cannot just routinely walk up and receive our Lord in Holy Communion. Or otherwise, before you know it, practically, the Blessed Sacrament is becoming unsatisfying food. And why is it unsatisfying? It's unsatisfying because it's not doing what Jesus meant it to do. He meant it to be transformative. He meant it to be totally satisfying. But that takes some work on our part. It means, as I said, we need to have an intention for every time we receive Holy Communion. What is the thing that I wish to draw from this heavenly manner? What is the grace that I'm asking for? What is the transformative power that I'm so in need of? That's how, that's one way of, of ensuring that we find continual satisfaction from the Blessed Sacrament. Another way is thinking of Our Lady's words in the Magnificat. She says, the hungry he has 
filled with good things. The rich he has sent empty away. And I think it's St. Louis de Montfort relates that to the Blessed Sacrament, those words, that the degree to which we hunger for the Blessed Sacrament is the degree to which it's going to satisfy us. Perhaps that was part of the uh, difficulty that the Jews were having with the daily provision of manna. They no longer hungered for it. They no longer really, really desired it so strongly and then they found it unsatisfying. We have, to, we have to stir up in ourselves a hunger for receiving the Blessed Sacrament because, as Our Lady says, it's the starving that the Lord fills with good things. It's to the degree that you truly hunger to receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament that you are going to be transformed by Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. And, and in that way, it will be, you will find the Blessed Sacrament truly satisfying. The hungry he has filled with good things, the rich he has sent empty away. And another, a final thought about Our Lady's approach to the, the Blessed Sacrament. The graces that we receive in Holy Communion are always going to be proportionate to detachment from sin and hatred of sin. Um, because we're only going to be satisfied with Jesus in Holy Communion um, if we see, if we appreciate the Holy Communion as this remedy, uh, as this remedy for all our weaknesses, but also um, as something that is divine. Um, a lot is said about Holy Communion as a medicine, but we can forget that Holy Communion is also divine and as you draw closer to divinity, that entails leaving behind sinfulness. We see that in, our, in God's preparation of Our Lady uh, to receive Jesus by making her immaculately conceived. Um, and Our Lady was continually delighted by the presence of Jesus inside of her for the very reason that she was sinless. The two things, the two things follow one another. And we're going to find the Blessed Sacrament satisfying for our souls, the degree to which, like Our Lady, we are more and more detached from sin, pulled away from sin. Um, and this is going to mean regular confession, weekly, fortnightly, and if you need it, daily. I say that because it's such a terrible offence to receive Jesus in mortal sin. If you have a concern that you may have committed a mortal sin, you need to go to confession before receiving our Lord in Holy Communion. Nothing shows greater irreverence to the Blessed Sacrament than receiving him out of routine. Routineness. It says that in, in the, in the um, Code of Canon Law, I think. Every aspect of routine uh, must be avoided in approach to the Blessed Sacrament. Yet, how much is our approach to the Blessed Sacrament routine? No wonder that hand on heart all our needs are not being satisfied by the Blessed Sacrament. Um, I did think it was St. Teresa of Avila who said this, but I recently read otherwise. I think it was maybe, uh, maybe St. Mary Magdalene of Patsy. She said, one Holy Communion is sufficient to make a saint. One Holy Communion is sufficient to make a saint. If you truly desire, um, and if you're truly detached from sin, and if you truly... Um, are conscious of the power in the Blessed Sacrament, that single communion has all that you need in it. A final, um, a final thought. Uh, thought. St. Alphonsus, um, in his book on the Blessed Sacrament, he says that um, if he was going to doubt um, the truth of Jesus in Holy Communion, he said it wouldn't be on account of the possibility of God um, uh, becoming man and then God uh, being able to make himself truly present uh, in a small uh, disc. He said he couldn't doubt that because God is, God is divine. God can do whatever he likes. He's all powerful. But he said, if I was going to doubt the belief of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, it would be on account of the seeming indifference, coldness, lack of transformation in those who are receiving Jesus. 
So evangelically, one of the one of the best things we can do to share our faith is by growing in love of the Blessed Sacrament and thereby hungering for the Blessed Sacrament and making that clear to everyone how much you hung for the Blessed Sacrament. And, and that being something evident in the amount of time you're here before Mass, the amount of time praying after Mass, speaking with Jesus once you've received him, the amount that you are thinking in your mind, oh, later today, yes, I'm going to receive communion later today. What's my intention going to be? All those things should be uh, evident qualities of your life as a Catholic, so much so that you become a proof of the real presence in your own life. You become a proof of the real presence because you are conscious of the transformative power of the real presence. May it, may, may it never even remotely echo in your heart that sentiment of the Jews who longed for the, um, the leeks, the onions, the garlic. How pathetic, how insignificant those other things are. People longing for all kinds of novelties. Let us instead, let us instead have a profound certainty that in Jesus, in the Blessed Sacrament, I have the answer for all my needs. He alone will suffice for me in and through the blessed sacrament. Ave Maria. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.